Welcome to this professional interview session for the role of a digital forensics analyst. This field demands a deep understanding of cybercrime, computer systems, evidence collection, and forensic analysis tools. A digital forensics analyst plays a crucial role in investigating digital breaches, recovering lost data, identifying intrusions, and supporting law enforcement or legal actions. Throughout this session, we will ask 10 comprehensive questions designed to assess your knowledge of technical procedures, legal standards, and investigative techniques within digital forensics. Each question is structured to provide insight into your understanding of tools, technologies, and best practices used in real-world investigations. 1. Can you describe the process of conducting a digital forensics investigation from start to finish? A digital forensics investigation is a meticulous process that involves identifying, collecting, analyzing, and presenting digital evidence in a legally admissible manner. The process starts with the identification phase, where potential sources of evidence are located. This could include computers, mobile devices, servers, or cloud storage. Next, evidence is preserved using imaging tools that create exact replicas of the data to avoid tampering with the original source. In the collection phase, analysts document the chain of custody and collect data using forensic tools like FTK or ENCASE. The analysis stage involves examining files, emails, logs, and network activity to uncover evidence such as deleted files or malware. Interpretation of findings is then performed to understand what happened, how, and who was involved. The final phase is reporting, where findings are documented in a structured, unbiased report suitable for legal or internal use. The process may also include testifying in court to defend your methodology and findings. Each step must comply with legal and ethical standards to ensure the integrity of the investigation. This structured approach ensures that digital evidence is collected and analyzed in a way that supports judicial proceedings or organizational policies effectively and ethically. Two. What are some key tools used in digital forensics and what are their primary functions? Digital forensics relies heavily on specialized tools to capture, preserve, and analyze digital evidence without altering the original data. One of the most widely used tools is ENCASE, which provides capabilities for acquiring disk images, recovering deleted files, and analyzing file structures. FTK, Forensic Toolkit, is another critical tool that enables fast indexing and searching of massive datasets, offering comprehensive features for email analysis, decryption, and data carving. Autopsy, an open source platform, offers timeline analysis, keyword searching, and metadata extraction. Wireshark is often used in network forensics for capturing and analyzing packet data in real time. Volatility and Recall are memory analysis tools designed to inspect our AM dumps for signs of malware or suspicious activity. Write blockers are essential hardware devices that prevent any modifications to the data storage during acquisition. Tools like Celebrite or Oxygen Forensic Detective specialize in mobile device forensics. Hashing tools such as MD5 or SHA-1 help verify data integrity during analysis. Each of these tools serves a distinct purpose within the forensic process, and a skilled analyst must understand when and how to use them efficiently. Mastery of forensic tools ensures a thorough investigation and strengthens the legal admissibility of evidence presented in court or internal inquiries. 3. How do you ensure the integrity and chain of custody of digital evidence? Maintaining the integrity and chain of custody of digital evidence is a fundamental responsibility of any digital forensics analyst. From the moment evidence is identified, strict protocols must be followed to ensure it remains unaltered and its handling is well documented. First, evidence is collected using write blocking devices that prevent data modification. Analysts then create a forensic image of the original storage media using tools like ENCASE or FTK Imager. A cryptographic hash value MD5 or SHA-256 is generated both before and after imaging to verify that no changes occurred. The evidence is labeled, tagged, and stored securely in tamper-evident containers. Every transfer of custody, whether between team members, to law enforcement, or during court proceedings, is logged with dates, times, and signatures to establish an unbroken chain. Documentation includes who handled the evidence, the purpose of access, 
and where the evidence was stored. Analysts also maintain investigation logs detailing all tools used and procedures followed. These steps are crucial for ensuring the admissibility of evidence in court. 4. What is the difference between live forensics and dead forensics? And when would you use each? Digital forensics investigations often fall into two primary categories, live forensics and dead forensics. Each has its unique context, advantages, and limitations. Live forensics involves examining a system while it is still powered on. This method is particularly useful when analysts need to capture volatile data such as our AM contents, running processes, active network connections, encryption keys, and open files, data that would be lost upon shutdown. Tools like Volatility or our AM Capture Utilities are employed in these scenarios. Live forensics is commonly used in incident response scenarios or when dealing with systems suspected of running malware or being part of an active breach. Dead forensics, on the other hand, is the analysis of powered off devices. It focuses on non volatile data such as file systems, disk contents, deleted files, and metadata. This method is safer in terms of preserving evidence integrity because there's no risk of altering volatile information or triggering system defenses. Dead forensics is typical for analyzing seized hardware or conducting post incident reviews. 5. How do you recover deleted or hidden files during a forensic examination? Recovering deleted or hidden files is a vital component of digital forensic investigations, especially when suspects attempt to conceal or destroy incriminating evidence. File recovery techniques begin with analyzing the file system structure, such as NTFS, FAT32, or extension 4, to identify areas marked as unallocated space or slack space. Deleted files often remain on disk until they are overwritten. Forensic tools like FTK, ENCASE, or Autopsy scan these regions to identify file signatures and reconstruct deleted data. Data carving techniques allow recovery even when file headers are missing, using patterns to rebuild files without metadata. Hidden files may be concealed through methods like renaming, changing file extensions, or placing them in obscure directories. More sophisticated hiding includes using steganography or encrypting files. Analysts use keyword searches, file type filters, and hash matching to detect suspicious files. System logs, registry entries, and shell bags also provide insight into hidden or deleted file activity. Timeline analysis can further expose anomalies, such as files created or accessed without user interaction. 6. What are the common types of cybercrimes that require digital forensic investigation? Digital forensic investigations play a vital role in combating various types of cybercrimes. One of the most prevalent forms is unauthorized access or hacking, where attackers infiltrate networks or systems to steal or manipulate data. Analysts are called upon to trace intrusion paths, examine logs, and identify compromised credentials. Another frequent offense is data theft or exfiltration often involving the illegal copying of confidential business or personal data. Email fraud and phishing schemes are also common, requiring forensic examination of email headers, IP addresses, and content to trace origins and victims. Ransomware attacks, which encrypt data and demand payment for decryption, call for forensic intervention to identify malware strains, infection vectors, and potential recovery options. Child exploitation cases involve retrieving and analyzing illicit content across devices while ensuring adherence to strict legal protocols. Insider threats, where employees misuse access privileges, are increasingly common and demand close inspection of internal logs, access patterns, and file changes. Intellectual property theft, online stalking, identity fraud, and digital harassment are also regular subjects of investigation. In each case, Forensic analysts must utilize technical tools and legal awareness to collect evidence that can support law enforcement or internal action. 7. How do you handle encrypted or password-protected files during investigations? Handling encrypted or password-protected files is one of the most challenging aspects of digital forensics. These files are intentionally secured to prevent unauthorized access, often by individuals attempting to hide incriminating data. The first step is to identify whether encryption is present and determine the type of encryption used. Whether it's full disk encryption, like BitLocker, 
file-level encryption, VeraCrypt, or built-in OS encryption. Analysts then seek clues that could lead to password recovery, such as user-generated password lists, browser-saved credentials, or hints in emails and documents. If legal permissions are in place, password cracking tools like John the Ripper, Hashcat, or Passware can be used to brute force or dictionary attack the files. These methods can be time-consuming and resource-intensive, particularly for strong encryption. If the system is still live, capturing memory may yield encryption keys stored in our AM, making it easier to decrypt data. In some cases, forensic examiners also rely on cooperation from suspects, court orders, or third-party data sources to obtain decryption credentials. Throughout this process, forensic analysts must document every attempt and ensure that methods comply with legal and ethical standards. Proper handling of encrypted data is essential to maintaining evidence integrity and maximizing the chances of a successful outcome in legal proceedings. 8. What role do operating systems play in digital forensics, and how do you analyze them? Operating systems, OS, are central to digital forensic investigations because they manage the storage, activity, and logging of all actions on a device. Each OS, such as Windows, Mac OS, or Linux, has distinct file systems, registries, and log structures that provide critical insight into user behavior and system events. In Windows, analysts review system and security logs, registry entries, prefetch files, and the NTFS file system. The registry, for example, contains information about installed applications, connected devices, and user preferences. In macOS and Linux, analysts focus on system logs, bash histories, and file permissions. Artifacts like recently accessed files, USB connections, login attempts, and browser history are essential for reconstructing user activity. Analysts use forensic tools such as Autopsy, X-Ways, and SleuthKit to parse and examine OS-level data. They also conduct timeline analysis to correlate system events with known incidents. In enterprise environments, analysts may retrieve data from centralized logging services or endpoint detection and response EDR tools. Understanding how each OS records data allows forensic specialists to identify anomalies, detect tampering, and extract hidden or deleted evidence. 9. How do you stay updated with the latest trends, threats, and tools in digital forensics? Digital forensics is a rapidly evolving field, and staying updated is essential for any professional analyst. Cyber threats, malware techniques, and forensic tools change frequently, so continual learning is necessary. One effective method is subscribing to forensic and cybersecurity newsletters such as SANS Newsbytes, Forensic Focus, and The Hacker News. These provide timely updates on vulnerabilities, tools, and case studies. Participation in training programs, webinars, and certification courses from organizations like SANS, EC Council, and ISACA also enhances knowledge. Certifications such as GCFA, CHFI, or CCE often require continuing education, which encourages analysts to stay current. Attending digital forensics conferences like DEFCON, Black Hat, or the DFRWS, Digital Forensic Research Workshop, offers exposure to real-world challenges and expert insights. Forums and communities like Reddit's r slash computer forensics or DFI r slack groups facilitate peer discussion and knowledge sharing. Analysts also follow updates from tool vendors to understand new features and security patches. Practicing with forensic labs and CTFS, capture the flag, sharpens technical skills. Reading books, white papers, and peer-reviewed journals builds a deeper understanding of digital evidence trends. By combining formal education with practical experience and community involvement, analysts can remain agile and informed ensuring their investigations are both modern and effective. 10. What challenges do you face in court when presenting digital forensic evidence? Presenting digital forensic evidence in court requires not only technical precision, but also the ability to explain complex concepts in simple, credible terms. One major challenge is ensuring the admissibility of evidence. Courts require a clear chain of custody, proper documentation, and proof that the data was not altered. If any step in the forensic process appears flawed, the evidence may be dismissed. Another difficulty lies in translating technical findings into understandable language for judges, 
juries, or attorneys who may lack technical knowledge. Analysts must explain how evidence was collected, what it reveals, and why it matters without relying on jargon. Opposing counsel may attempt to discredit the methods used or question the analyst's qualifications. Analysts must be prepared to defend their procedures and maintain composure under cross-examination. Additionally, privacy laws and legal boundaries can limit what data is admissible, especially in international or cross-jurisdictional cases. There is also the risk of bias or misinterpretation, so reports must remain objective and factual. The analyst's credibility, clarity, and professionalism play a crucial role in how evidence is received. Overcoming these challenges requires technical expertise, legal awareness, and strong communication skills to ensure that digital evidence is both reliable and persuasive in legal proceedings. A successful digital forensics analyst must blend technical proficiency with investigative rigor, legal understanding, and clear communication. These 10 questions highlight the multifaceted responsibilities of the role, preparing candidates to demonstrate their competence across tools, methodologies, and ethical challenges.